Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to have some fun doing what we love to do here, and that's blow things up. Only today we're not going to be doing it so much with mesh as we are with particles. Now we're going to use a very simple stock particle along with uh, some stock props. And I think you're going to like what you see when you see how simple it is. Because there really is nothing to this. You just have to remember in your initial setups, as we start setting this up, that you want to make changes to color, you want to make changes to your particle before you multi-duplicate. Because we're going to have probably over a hundred sets of three rocks each. And each of those are going to have a particle attached to them. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to need first is the free rocks. So let's go to rock nature g1 and we just want the single rocks rock one rock two and rock eight and what I'm going to do right now is just separate them just a little bit we want to have interaction with these rocks so we want them to collide with each other because they actually are going to be physics enabled so we're going to physics enable them and for right now I'm going to give it a convex hull. This is something you're going to want to experiment with just like I say anytime we do this you want to come back and change bounding types and just to see what happens. So anyway we're at convex hull and then the next thing we're going to do is go into physics physics props and we're going to load our infinite plane so that it has something to bounce against. Now one more thing we need to do with these rocks is we need to turn them into dummies. Let's set them as dummies so that we can use the control D to toggle them on and off. Now if you're not going to use debris, if you don't want debris, you just want the smoke trails we're going to create, then I would suggest that you go ahead, instead of using something like these rocks in 192 faces, you'll want to come in and get a block like we use, which I think is 12 faces. So you can put a lot more streams, a lot more effect in that way. So right now we have our basic setup. Now we need to go ahead and attach our particles, which is going to be the dust particle under miscellaneous. We want to load three of them. So let's go ahead and load our particles. Now for those of you that have not worked with particles before, they actually do have a way to make them visible where you can see it. The green area is the bounding box as far as the output area, the emit area. But what we want to do right now is just attach one particle to one rock. So we'll pick parent and you can click it here or you can click it over here. Whatever you do, you want to go in and position it. So we'll go back and get another dust particle. Pick parent. Position. The last dust particle. Pick parent. Position. Okay. Now we should have, yeah, the dust particle attached to each one. Now right now is where you can see that it would be important before you multi-duplicate to make any changes to the dust particle or you're going to have to come back to this point because when we multi-duplicate we're going to do 99 duplications of this. We don't want to have to make 99 times 3 changes if we wanted to change each particle. So it's very important to kind of think this out or as you'll see we'll go back and forth as we figure out what we want to do. Now when I say go back and forth I mean we'll use the do and undo feature because we may duplicate it 99 times decide we want to change something we'll just hit the undo and that way we'll erase the duplications. We'll go back and make changes to our master set here and then reduplicate. That's really all there is to it. So let's go ahead and see where we're at right now. We want this to be one group and we want it to maintain its grouping as far as one dust item, one dust particle attached to one rock. So we can't select two rocks and attach it to one or we would lose our uh, grouping and all three particles would be attached to one rock. So let's grab one of the rocks and let's attach one at a time to the top rock. It doesn't really matter which rock you attach to or if you were using dummies, which dummy you attach to. So we now have one group, and that enables us to multi-duplicate. And now we'll let iClone do the work. We're going to get 99 duplications of this. There they are. Now we're going to grab a rotate tool, and we're going to rotate it into a very tight grouping, where it has to bounce off of each other. 
Okay. Now let's change to by frame. Make sure our physics engine's on. And your very first simulation may be a little strange. It may jump. Uh, you don't really have to worry about it because all you're trying to do is go ahead and get the physics driven rocks moving. What we can do later is take a second run at it with physics off to improve our particle flow. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, there's your explosion. Now you'll want to experiment with uh, uh, life cycle, minimum, maximum, things like that. We're just going to let this run for a little bit. We'll stop right there, take off the biframe and turn off the engine so we can now get a clean run on the particles. Okay. Okay, now we can refine this somewhat. So in order to change this, we're going to need to undo and keep undoing until all of those duplicates are gone. Okay, there we are. Now they're all gone. Now we can come in and make a lot simpler changes to our dust particles. Let's go ahead and let's change our quota. Let's double it to 1,062 on each dust particle. So make them a little more robust. You'll want to experiment with all of this in time and we will go over more particles in, in future installments. But what we have right now is we have pretty much doubled our quota and our emit rate. Okay. Now we'll let the multi duplicate do the work again. Maybe one day we'll get a scatter tool too. But anyway, enough dreaming. Just glad to have the multi duplicate. Tighten that up. Hit OK. Let's go to by frame. Physics are on. Let's see what happens. It should be thicker, you should be able to see the trails more, and it should last a little longer. Now that's more like an explosion that I'd have in mind, more like what I would think of as a ground explosion. Trails are definitely a lot easier to see when we double that emit rate and quota. We're just letting it play out. Okay, let's turn that off, let's turn off our physics, and let's just see what it looks like. Much better explosion, much more defined. Still could use some more work. Let's go ahead and let's toggle off our visibility on our dummies, or on our rocks, and you can see what it looks like. without any of those in the way. Now we'll note the difference in a real-time explosion versus a by frame. What you're going to render out will be closer to the by frame, which looks a lot better. Now something that we should have done on our initial grouping of three was turn our emitters off past a certain point. We didn't do that. So what I'm doing now is going back and group selecting the 99 groups of three. And as soon as iClone can select those, then we'll go ahead and delete them. Now I'm going to delete them, and that may take a bit to speed of your machine just depends on how long it's going to take. You can always work in smaller groups also. Okay, now we're down to our original grouping. So what we want to do here is get to each of our dust particles. And this is something you'll have to figure out in your own project. 
at around 600 is where I want it to stop at, but in this case, because of how long it takes the emitter to spin down, I'm just going to arbitrarily pick 300. And what I'm going to do is turn the emitter off. And we need to do this for all three emitters without moving our scrubbers so that all three turn off at the same time. We'll make our rocks visible again. We're going to come back up here to group one. We're going to shift D and we're going to multi duplicate it 99 times again. When it's finished, we're going to go ahead and rotate it around like we did before into a tight circle. And the size of this circle probably depends on how your interaction is going to be. We'll just leave it right there for now. Now we do want to rerun the simulation. We don't have a choice on that. So let's go ahead and see what happens. And since we're running by frame with so many objects, 99 times 3, each with an emitter, it's going to take a while for it to do its initial run. So we'll go ahead and let some of these rocks settle. And no matter how hard you work on a physics simulation, some things are just unpredictable for whatever reason. So there will always be a little bit of cleanup involved. And we may want to take uh, elasticity down to zero so they don't bounce. We could do that with the infinite plane and the rocks. That way you wouldn't have to worry about that. This is good enough now for us to see what's going to happen. We'll turn off our simulation. That way we're not worried about that. And let's see how our emitters work. Let's see how clean the simulation is towards the end. Somewhere around 300 they're going to start shutting off. And this is something you're just going to have to experiment on. Now we turn the debris off. And there's what it looks like without that. Main thing, of course, when you're doing it is to have the patience to run the simulation all the way through, which we don't have time for in this tutorial. But just experiment, experiment with your groupings, experiment with your bounding types. And then also, I'm going to show you a little bit of difference about what happens when you change gravity. So let's come in here and let's take out our infinite plane. Choose our selection tool. And what we're doing is grabbing all the rocks and therefore all the emitters. And one cyclone catches up, we're going to raise this up off the ground. Everything you've been seeing so far has been with regular gravity or downwards a minus 9.8 gravity. Now let's see what happens here. Now it didn't change mainly because I forgot to turn on the simulation. And that won't be the only time I do that. I was wondering why things weren't going down. Now you notice we have more of a starburst. Alright, let's go in and let's change our world physics settings from minus 9.8 to just a positive 9.8. And you get a little different starburst. Or we can do one better than that and we can come back in here and go to zero. Run the simulation again, and with no gravity, you'll get an even better starburst. Of course, that all just depends on what you're looking for. So you can make ground explosions, or you can make air explosions this way. 
whether you use the, use the actual mesh or not is up to you. If you're not going to show the mesh, then once again, I would recommend you using something like a cube that only has 12 faces. Other than that, it's just experiment and see what else you can come up with.